So my name is Ifya Faya. I'm a clinical academic currently working in the South Mead Hospital in Bristol. So my role um, at the moment is I am a combination of doing an academic clinical lectureship with the University of Plymouth, as well as doing a subspecialty urogynecology training um, run both between University Hospital Plymouth and Southmead Hospital here in Bristol. I um, went to medical school in Ireland in the Royal College of Surgeons, Ireland, um, finished there and started normal clinical training. Um, after that, I did a master's in obstetrics and gynecology, which is, I guess, one of the things that we were encouraged to do as obstetrics and gynecology trainees. And then I got an opportunity to go ahead and do a PhD. I went into doing the PhD simply because in obstetrics, a lot of the patients were quite happy with everything that was going on. The deliveries were great. They were very happy. But in gynecology, a lot of bladder pain patients felt very much like there wasn't enough being done for them. Bladder pain syndrome is one of these syndromes that there's unknown etiology, not very much treatments that go with it. Hence why I went in to do a PhD and learn and study and understand bladder pain syndrome a little bit more. So my PhD was run between Cork, University College Cork and King's College London, where I did a four year degree on neuroscience, actually studying pain, bladder pain syndrome. After that, I think um, I had completely solidified my academic career and I was determined to continue with academia, hence I applied for an academic clinical lectureship. And um, I applied to come and do it in Plymouth because of one of the professors down there, actually. Their research interest was very much similar to what I was interested in, a combination of bladder pain syndrome as well as women's health and improving women's health so that in the future, when after they have given birth, they are their health is a lot better. So that's essentially how I went, um, ended up in Plymouth um, to do my academic clinical fellowship. Following on for this, I applied for the academic clinical lectureship, which I got. And then because I wanted to um, stay in a tertiary center, um, i.e. a center which would be research active and would afford me the, all the opportunities I wanted in order to be able to continue in my academic career, I decided to do some specialty training in urogynecology um, because um, I understood this was the best way in order to be able to um, have a career as a consultant in a tertiary center. Um, hence why I applied for the subspecialty training, which I was lucky enough to get one between Bristol and Plymouth. So, um, so that's how I am where I am now, doing a combination of subspecialty training in urogynecology as well as uh, clinical lectureship um, in urogynecology as well. Wow. Um, well, I think um, the first advice I'd probably give and the one that I found most useful for me when I was starting off was to find a mentor. Somebody who has achieved what you hope to achieve in your career is, um, I think, the best advice I would give to somebody starting out. You need to find someone who's motivated and has time to talk to you regularly. Um, research is not easy. If it was, everybody would be doing it. So you need somebody that can dig you out of those, oh God, I can't do this. My publication has been rejected for the third time. This is the fourth application I've sent in for a grant, which has once again been rejected. So having those people who can lift you up during hard times is so important. Another advice I would think is to pick a topic which interests you and you're passionate about. So I picked pain um, and did uh, my PhD in neuroscience and carried this on in bladder pain syndrome. These patients are so desperate for any sort of help or cure or anything that it really is just empowering or it's it really makes me just want to do more like when you talk to these patients you just find how just how awful it is for them and it really has really like made me just 
really passionate about the subject. Every time somebody talks about a bladder, oh my God, my ears prick up. And I'm like, yes, bladders, let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's get a study going. Let's get research going. Let's get audits, quality improvement, whatever it is. There's something you're passionate about is quite important, I think. And I think also maybe try to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. I, at the beginning of my career, was always very obstetrically inclined. And it was only just talking to these patients, these bladder pain patients, that I started thinking more about gynae and urogynecology. And it definitely wasn't my comfort zone when I was starting out, but I stepped out of my comfort zone to think about something different and try something different. And now anybody who starts talking to me about bladder will get an hour of you know, talk or information or whatever about it. And you fall in love with it. So it's, it's, it's useful maybe sometimes to just try something different that you may not be, because you never know what you might love, you know? So um, I would advise to try stuff out of your comfort zone and learn something new. And most importantly, enjoy yourself. If you find that you're not enjoying yourself, then this is a time to bail because you will not produce good research, you will not produce good studies, um, everything will be low quality. So make sure you are enjoying yourself at every step of the way. Um, so, um, well, actually, one that does come to mind is when I first started out, the biggest misconception really for me with the people I worked with was that my research time was essentially time off. <laughs> um, um, and they, they, a lot of people didn't understand that I was actually doing a lot of work during my research time and the academic time isn't actually time off. A lot of people think that it's easy and <laughs> that is a very big misconception. Research is not easy. Like I said previously, if it was easy and everybody would be doing it, but it's one of those careers, which is, um, it's just very challenging and intellectually pleasing at the same time. So um, yes, that, I think that was the biggest misconception really about it, that one, it's off time that you can just chill and two, that it's easy. So I feel that health research has high value to society. It can provide such important information about disease trends and risk factors, outcomes of treatments, patterns of care, et cetera. Clinical trials can provide such important information about the efficacy and adverse effects of um, medicinal interventions by controlling those variables. But this doesn't mean that feedback from real world clinical experience is, um, that's also quite important. Research as a whole, it's led to significant discussion Discoveries and remarkable improvements in healthcare, public health, etc. And even it helps to save money. There's a lot of economists that have found that medical research can have an enormous impact on human health and longevity and consequently improving productivity, which will then contribute to the national economy by people not calling in sick for work, etc., because their health is improved. And this is stuff that we find from research. And research has also demonstrated that preventative measures such as mammograms or in my specialty, cervical smears, et cetera, has substantially reduced morbidity and mortality from disease. So it's quite a huge impact that research does have on the wider society. <laughs> 